Hello, my friends from around the world. Beautiful souls. Thanks for joining me here at JP's Path of Awareness. And welcome to the new followers of my channel here. Just wanted to say how grateful I am of the connection we have with you. We being the Christ. <clears throat> because that deeper connection I know you are feeling. And it goes to all of you. So great to talk with the new ones. A little deeper last night. My time last night. Morning for you. <laughs> but I'm going to continue on with uh, the Boulder Creek series. Um, in class two, this is, this is a continued from side one into side two. The hypnosis of the five senses, which are subservient completely to the world mind, is the total illusion which comes through and is called your adversary, your cosmic adversary. And it's happening while you're asleep, while you think you're being an angel. It's happening while you are going out and doing good for the poor by distributing food to them. It's happening while you are going out and doing all those nice human things as you think are God's will for you. It's happening while you're praying in a church. It's happening while the minister is standing up and telling you that God is love. The world mind, working through the five senses of each individual on this earth, is the cosmic adversary and it is often speaking the sermons right from the pulpit. It is giving everyone a false sense of security. It is telling their five senses, God is going to take care of you. God will visit you. God won't forget you. And that sounds so good to the five sense mind. God can never remember a human being. God can never help a human being. God never made one. Now that is the five sense universe we walk in and die in. And we watch our children grow up, grow up and die in it too. And it is our function to work, to walk in the kingdom of God here and not in this five sense universe. And to teach our children how to do the same, to walk here in the kingdom of God as the child of God, to abolish all belief in death, all belief in pain, all belief in sickness, all belief in anything unlike God, because it doesn't exist and it's untrue to break the tyranny of the five kings. So when you decide to go the Christ way, you may be influencing hundreds of people. And when you decide not to, it's not only your human self who will suffer, but those you might have helped if you had decided to go all the way in Christ, out of mortality, out of a temporary lifespan, out of a material selfhood, out of a five sense creature living within the confines of a human body. Now we have all been held in that hypnosis for many, many generations. And even though we rise to high places in consciousness, we must continue to be tempted by the hypnosis. You see, you can't live on this earth without temptation, 
because that's what Earth is all about. It's to provide you with that testing ground so that your soul can be subject to everything that is possible to build your flawless consciousness of who you are so that when you finally break the tyranny of the five senses you are that which knows itself to be the perfect child of God and you're ready to move out of this day into the fifth level of consciousness the fifth day to make your transition and to know that no one is ever going to place me underground no one is ever going to find me because I am an invisible being no one can ever see the life that I am no one is ever going to be able to collect me in a little bunch I am an infinite life I exist beyond the Sun beyond the stars, beyond the galaxies. I exist everywhere. And when you have accepted that you are the everywhere life of God and no other, you will begin to take this everywhere self that you are and see the potency of it in a different way than you may have seen it up to now. You've said, I am an everywhere self, and we have tried to expand that into a knowledge that my everywhere self is everywhere. But did it occur to you that your everywhere self is speaking these words to you out of the Bible? That's the only speaker here. Your everywhere self is your teacher. Your everywhere self is teaching you how Joshua bro broke the tyranny of the five senses. Why? Because your everywhere self says, follow me. Follow me. You were running outside for help. Why? Weren't you willing to accept that I am present and that I am everywhere and that I am omnipotent and that I know before you ask and that because I know and because I am omnipotent that this cannot be happening. Did you really think it was happening? You didn't know that I am omnipotent, did you? You thought God was closing his eyes. God wasn't almighty. How could this be happening? You let the five senses fool you. You know no one can ever be suffering in the kingdom of God. You thought there was another place. What other place is there? How many creators do we have? One creator, one God, one heaven, one kingdom. Now what else is there? That's the temptation we face, to believe that there is something beside the living kingdom of God, something beside the divine child of God. And when the pain comes, when the problems come, when the fears come, when the insecurity comes, you're merely being told that you are accepting a second other than the kingdom, a second other than the divine life, a second other than the divine identity always in duality. The second you suffer, but come back to the one, one creator. Now what can come out of one perfect creator? 
What else is there if there is one perfect creator? And so, if you accept something imperfect, you are rejecting God. You are rejecting one perfect creator who knows, who has the power to maintain that perfection right where you are. And then it's no longer right where you are because you're not there. You're not there. Now then, I can see the day when a class like this can meet and before the class meets, we know that everyone coming to that class knows that they're sending an image to sit in that class. They're not coming to that class. How can anywhere come to one spot? How can everywhere come to one spot? They're sending an image to that class, but they are remaining in their everywhere self. And just to pause on that a moment. I hope, hope you can take time in this and recognize that's the true words in the Bible that in Him we live and move and have our being. I hope you can see the difference of thinking, oh yeah, I have this and yeah, I'm everywhere and yeah, this truth is everywhere. No, that's still a cosmic image trying to tell us that we're trying to do it instead of recognizing this deeper truth that in Him I live and move and have my being. Then He is maintaining it. He is sustaining it. He is providing everything necessary. All the intelligence, all the spiritual understanding, the only life, the only love. It's very different to meditate on in that recognition as he's teaching us here. I would love to help any of you that want to take that step deeper. Herb continues here. Now then, then you'll do the same to your office your home, and so forth. But you'll never say, I went to my office. I went to my house. I this, I that. You are always on everywhere self, and you send an image automatically. Your consciousness can send forth an image. And this is the miracle of what we've been doing without realizing it. We've been sending images forth in form called body. But we hadn't known that we were the everywhere self and that we always are. That we always are. Even when the image goes somewhere, we're still the everywhere self. And this image is within the everywhere self. The infinite way is the knowledge of your infinity 
as the everywhere self. Your infinity throughout time, throughout space, until time and space are just little toy dolls. They become your servants instead of you being their slave. Your everywhere self is your identity. And because as a human being, you don't know anything about your everywhere self. You read the Bible, which is your everywhere self, telling you what you want to know. And don't turn your back on it. You're only turning your back on yourself. Now we said yesterday, last night, that your everywhere self is the Christ. Christ and the everywhere self are one and the same. Omnipresent Christ is your everywhere self. This is the truth. And if you had no other truth but worked with that truth day in and day out, meeting everything that way, it would soon become clear to you that there's a power there. It really is you, no. It really is you know. It works. It's vital. It has the omnipotent power and it is everywhere present. It's working and it's working whether you are experiencing it or not. And the more you're trying to bring it into this fellow here, the more you're pushing it away because now it dawns upon you that this is the fellow you're trying to get rid of. I'm going to pause on that. As you see, I'm speaking here of that fellow. That's the one who's always trying to get us to fix this, to fix that, to get rid of the pain, to get rid of the anxiety, the fear, the anger. We just have to learn, just like he talks about in some of the other series, that we have to take the whole trunk and throw it out. That's not us. Our true being is hid with Christ. Remember, Christ is the everywhere self. And that's already perfect. So very different to recognize this, that that Christ self is you. It is me. It is everyone. That's why we can't leave anyone out. We can't call ourselves that and then not see it as everyone. Because it's the only self. So her continues here. Oh, it's a totally different game now. We're not trying to improve this fellow. We're trying to get rid of this fellow because you've got to live in your identity. The five senses say, feed this fellow, improve this fellow, make him successful. Build his career. Get him out there in front and make people see how important he is. 
be sure you've got all your annuities for your old age because your income is going to go down then. That's the five cents picture. But now, turn ye in bold print. Turn ye. That's your only repentance. It's not for sins you've committed or moral things you did. Repentance is simply turning around and going back to yourself. Turn ye back to yourself. There's a great word I'd like you to remember. It's amnesia. And add one word to it. Cosmic. This is our disease. This is our adversary. We have cosmic amnesia. And it makes us dropouts from heaven. We've become heavenly dropouts because we do not know who our self is. And so we think, this is me, and that's her, and this is him. And there are those seven over there. And our self is the everywhere life of God. We're dropouts from that when we don't know it. And then we crawl into this little toothpaste tube and we let the five senses squeeze us out day by day, minute by minute. And we're so happy to settle for a little extra year in a lifespan when we are the eternal self. Now years ago, I couldn't have said this to you, but I can say to you now that you can know ye are the eternal self. That you are the eternal self, well enough so that nothing can push you out of that belief. And in the knowing you are the eternal self, you find a power from that which takes care of the things that would come and disturb you before you even know about them. It's as if you built a moat of light around you and these things hit the moat and they just can't cross. Some get through. And the only way they get through is because you go to sleep again. You forget you're the eternal self. You put yourself in a dress or a pair of pants, and there you are again, never realizing that spirit takes no thought for its raiment. Spirit wears no human clothes. If it does, it wears only a seamless garment. The eternal self is the seamless garment. You see it in a form, in a package, but it has its consciousness as the eternal self. Now your consciousness as the eternal self is part of the reason for this meeting for you to develop that consciousness, not to repair your human body, because there is no repair necessary in a body that you don't have. And if you are taken into this repair, do it with the knowledge that at this present moment, my consciousness is not high enough to lift me out of this moment momentary repair. Do it with that knowledge and you'll find there won't be a reoccurrence. It's the way you face this situation with the knowledge that I am 
the eternal self. And maybe at this particular instant, I haven't reached that level of knowledge which can consciously know a sufficient truth to bring forth my eternal substance. So, I may have to submit on this side to this repair. Fine. Don't have any guilt about it. But while you're submitting to this repair, please know the truth of yourself, because there must come a day when you don't have to submit to any repair, because in the knowledge of your eternal self, your eternal substance will be your position. And so yes, and maybe at this particular instant, I haven't reached that level of knowledge which can consciously know a sufficient truth to bring forth my eternal substance. So I may have to submit on this side to this repair. Fine. Don't have any guilt about it. But while you're submitting to this repair, please know the truth of yourself. Because there must come a day when you don't have to submit to any repair. Because in the knowledge of your eternal self, your eternal substance will be your physician. Pause on that and I went back a couple sentences, but so important there that as we recognize this Christ eternal self, everywhere self, as he said, it it actually meets the need of things that we didn't even know we had a need for. That's what he's helping us with here is to step out of that time track. That we're seeing everything as Joel talks about in the synchronicity that everything flows together at this very moment. It's always in the now. We're not trying to better something, improve something become something. So very important to catch that in the now, that spirit, that eternal substance. Herb continues, in my earlier work, which wasn't too long ago, I used to work 18 hours a day taking care of all claims that came to me. Many of them were successful. But I have now learned a higher duty, and I have only learned it through my own development. That taking care of claims is not the major function. That if it were, Christ would have stayed on earth just taking care of claims as Christ Jesus. And Christ Jesus would have been walking the earth today taking care of claims or at that time would have taken care of all claims, not just the few special cases. He would have healed all lepers for all time. There would never be a heart attack in this earth if Christ Jesus had one function to heal claims. But the higher teaching is while we are healing our claims, to reach a certain care, a certain core of people who can accept that they're not people with claims, that they are divine children, and then to come above that into the knowledge that they are not separated individual divine children, but they are the one everywhere self. They are the one being, so that if we could take off our skins at this moment, we would only find one being, not 60 or 70 people. That should be your consciousness wherever you go. All that is here is one being, and you will find out of it 
becomes omnipotence as a living force maintaining its own being. You have recognized its being as the only being, and it then becomes the force policing itself, maintaining itself, because you're no longer separated from it by five senses. And Joshua said, Roll great stones upon the mouth of the cave, and set men by it, for to keep them. And stay ye not, but pursue after your enemies, and smite the hind most of them. Suffer them not to enter into their cities, for the Lord your God hath delivered them into your hands. Your eyes have been opened to the five kings. Now keep them in their places. And it came to pass when Joshua and the children of Israel had made an end of slaying them with a very great slaughter till they were consumed, that the rest which remained of them entered into fenced cities. Now, this great slaughter, then, is your overcoming of the beliefs of your five senses. It becomes easier when you can accept that not only are the beliefs false, but because the five senses are mortal and will die, they are not God's creation. So anything they believe is false. Anything they believe is false. I don't have to analyze anything. Whatever I see is false. Whatever I hear is false. This is the way you begin thinking so that as you automatically dissolve your belief in the five senses and what they bring you, you find something back there begins to start perking. And it's beyond the level of your five sense thought that you have entered the realm of the soul, of soul vision. And soul vision is cognizant of the power and the presence. And it becomes conscious of the power and the presence and you're conscious of the power and the presence. Where before, you had only been conscious of the evidence of the senses. You become spiritually conscious, aware, and then what you're looking at changes right before your eyes to something else because your soul brings forth that which replaces what your senses had brought forth. In bold letters, your soul brings forth that which replaces what your senses had brought forth. Oh, I feel better, or he feels better, or she feels better. But what if there is inflation? It's only in the world image mind. It can't touch the divine mind. It can't touch my everywhere self. And as I know this, it cannot touch that which I am. I am not a self that can be influenced by inflation. There is no such me. This begins to be how you are automatically thinking. You are accepting yourself to be the eternal being. Now, if you find you can accept that, something in you has prepared you to accept that. And if you find you cannot, you have work to do. Your work is twofold. You either have to work until you can accept that you are the eternal self, or because you do accept it, 
You have to live with it, live that way. Face things that way. Who convinceth me of sin? The Father is too pure to behold iniquity. The eternal self is too pure to accept iniquity. You are straightening the beliefs of the five senses. You are slaughtering the beliefs of the five senses. You slaughter the belief that pain is a reality. That limitation is a reality. That lack is a reality. You're not thinking about this fellow over here anymore. You're getting rid of the person. Now you've read and read and read about impersonalizing. That's what it means. Get rid of the person. Get rid of the person is the only way you impersonalize. It's a very gentle way of saying, die to your mortal self. And then, if you hate the word die, which you have heard a lot of this time, remember what it really means. You've been seeing it from the human standpoint. You've been hearing the word dying and you say, I wish you'd stop saying that word, but there's a reason. You must die in order to live. That's the only way you live. If you do not die to the false sense of you, you're apt to believe that false sense of you really is you. The dying is the living because what you see die doesn't show you what is being born. You're returning to self. Every time you hear that word die, smile. It's a sign that if you can accept that you're willing to, you are being reborn of the spirit. Reborn out of the five senses. Now then, world thought. Please try to see this in your individual thought. World thought is your individual thought. All human thought, even when it says, I love God. Human thought will ultimately turn on you and oppose God and attack God. And if you don't believe it, think for a moment. Think of those Hebrews who thought they loved God. They were just as sincere as we are. Think of the bait that was thrown, this world mind, by the Christ. Go ahead, crucify me. That was the bait. And then comes the world mind in the form of these Hebrews and it crucifies. Don't you see that's what world thought is doing? That's why it was brought out in the open to show you that this is an invisible process of the world mind. It crucifies reality by simply existing in us as us, putting us forth as mortal forms. We as we walk in mortality, are crucifying the Christ and not even knowing it. When you put your shoe on in the morning, you are crucifying Christ. You've got to take off your shoe. You've got to know that every physical form on this earth is crucifying Christ simply by being there. Unless there is a consciousness that knows 
It isn't there. You cannot be a human being without crucifying Christ. You see the totality? To lay down my life, to pick up thy life, sell all thou hast and follow me. To lay down my life, to pick up thy life, to sell all thou hast and follow me. And unconsciously, we haven't been willing to give it that totality. We're withholding a little something, just a little something. We want that little remainder of mortality. The good part. Can't do it. Give it up. Your immortal self is the only self there is. And without saying a word of it to your friends, give up their mortal self. Give it up. It doesn't exist. Give up the mortal self of your dear ones. Don't malpractice them that way. If you love God supremely, Love God where they stand. Love the immortal self of everyone you know. I know it's hard, but really, it beats dying. It really does. And so we really take some kind of punishment, you might say, in trying to follow this path. We are persecuted in his name, and the persecution is in the giving up of this mortal self. That's the persecution. You're giving up what you had thought was real, to be what you find out is real. You join those who are called Israelites, those who are willing to walk in the truth of being at all costs. I think in this reading here, we're getting the point then that we're not trying to improve human people. We're not trying to build better human lives. And some of you may not have known that. We're not penit We're not pretending to try to improve human lives. We're simply not trying to improve them at all. We don't recognize them, but we do know that the Spirit of God is the name of your being. And we are trying to recognize that Spirit of God in you, which is the perfection of God the self of God, the eternity of God, the life of God, the power of God, the wisdom of God. And we are trying to recognize this in our enemies as well, because the Father says, pray for your enemies, love your enemies. And that intelligence, which is beyond the five sense intelligence, is the one we respect. And when it says, love your enemies, through soul, we interpret that to mean that our enemies are not there, but the Spirit of God is there. And now this is your spiritual universe with only the Spirit of God everywhere. And finally, you must identify that Spirit of God everywhere as your only self. 
That is your realization of one spirit of God. It is myself and your stepping out of the belief in a person, in a longevity, in a division, in a time slot. You're stepping out of your time track. I'd like to finish this. All the people return to the camp to Joshua at Macadon. In peace, none moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. A new self being born here. A new self is being born here. And then said Joshua, Open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings unto me out of the cave. And they did so and brought forth those five kings unto him out of the cave. The king of Jerusalem, of Hebron, of Jarmuth, of Lachish, and the king of Eglon. And it came to pass that they brought out those kings unto Joshua, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said to the captains of the men of war, which went with him, Come near now, put your feet upon the necks of these kings. And they came near and put their feet upon the necks of these kings. And Joshua said unto them, Fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage. For thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom we fight. There the Christ is placing every world problem in the five senses and saying, Put your foot on the necks of these kings. See that your problems and the problems around you are in these five senses. And that's where they are. And the Lord will show you that's where they are. If you will go that far. It hurts. What hurts? Your sense of touch hurts. Take that sense of touch and put your foot on its neck which in soul language means resist not evil and step out of the material body which feels that pain out of the body present with the Lord we want to develop that I am not in this body consciousness that's how you step on the neck of the five senses they're trying to hold you in it. And they've done a pretty good job. But now Joshua gets you to see that you must put your foot right on the neck. And your foot is the truth in your consciousness. That's what you walk on. You walk on truth in consciousness. And the truth is... I am the eternal spirit of God. And that is the foot you place on the neck of the five sense beliefs. It breaks their back. Identity. But not identity as person. Not identity as a local spirit. Identity as the eternal infinite spirit of God. And with that, we will meditate.
our meditation is the acceptance that the presence of God is here. The presence of spirit here is alive, functioning, maintaining perfection, and that same spirit here is the spirit that I am. There aren't two. I am the spirit of God here. I have always been and always will be. That is my name and that I will never adulterate by letting the five senses bring me into a mental belief that I am not that perfect, purified, ever perfect, unpolluted spirit of God. That I will never adulterate by letting the five senses bring me into a mental belief that I am not that perfect, purified, ever perfect, unpolluted spirit of God. All mental pollution is washed away in the knowledge of self. Sense pollution, thought pollution, mental pollution are the only places where the evils of this world appear. And if you let them get behind, if you let them get beyond the senses, they will externalize as the pollution of the air and the pollution of the ocean, the pollution of our lives. Truth in consciousness is identity, accepted as the living spirit of God. Now while you are in meditation, for those of you who are very ambitious, adventurous, I will suggest that not necessarily while you're here, but when you get home. Many have wondered about the life of Jesus Christ in his infancy. I am suggesting that you think about the life of Jesus Christ before he becomes Jesus. And if you really want something beautiful to study, study the life of Joshua. And you might find that you're studying the life of Jesus before he became, became Jesus. It may lead you to understand the virgin birth better. You may see that Jesus broke the five sense veil as Joshua and was able to leave this earth and then come back in that divine image form by the soul of Joshua and the soul of Mary uniting to produce the new image, the perfect image called Jesus. If you will look at Joshua with the soul, you will find the life of Jesus before the virgin birth laid out for you. Every word there is a new vista, and it may lead you to know that souls also work through you in the same way purifying and cleansing you so that you may release yourself to the higher self and walk forth from this mortal sense into the realization of your own divine image. A different you should be emerging. A different you. A you in which every miracle of God is possible because truthfully, every miracle of God has already been completed in the finished you. Get to know that miraculous you. Well, it's a beautiful day and let's enjoy it. And I'll see you again at two. to so grateful to share this depth with you all and I know this
can be hard at times. But I'll tell you, the more you free yourself of this person that you are not, you will feel so much of the spirit taking over that it really allows you to walk in that kingdom here and now to see that glory that effortless glory in everything and in everyone once again we see that true Christ has our eternal everywhere self everything is done then it helps you to take the steps necessary in your life for whatever you need and to bless all those around you and whoever you hold your consciousness upon and as he says when you truly allow yourself to walk in this Christ self you will touch hundreds of lives that you don't even know. There's the ones who are ready and the ones who are seeking that truth will find it through your consciousness. So great to share with you again. Great to spend time Look forward to talking deeper with whoever wants to text me and get in touch. Many blessings. Back on the next one.